Wondering what's next in your business or personal life? Welcome to Success to Significance, Life After Breaking Through Glass Ceilings, a podcast dedicated to helping you with all of life's challenges, discoveries, and opportunities. Whether you're seeking a new career, retirement, or simply wanting to make an impact in your community or the world, Join Jen DuPlessis and her guests as they explore how to start, what to do when you're in the thick of a change or growth, and how to leave a mark in this world after breaking through your next achievement. You are moments away from the aha you've been seeking. Hey, everyone, and welcome back to Success to Significance, Life After Breaking Through Glass Ceilings. I'm your host, Jen DuPlessis, and I am so delighted today to have a wonderful guest with us, Carrie Conley. Welcome, Carrie, to the show. Jen, thank you so much. We finally made it happen. I know. <laughs> I know this only took like four months for the, the appointment to be made, you know? That's already- yeah. It's all good. It's crazy. Well, again, I'm delighted to have you on the show. I want to take this opportunity to introduce you to everybody. So I'm going to read your your bio just a little bit, uh, but just so that everyone knows, Carrie is a nationally recognized speaker, author, entrepreneur, and mom specializing in helping women create life-changing vision letters for their lives. And I can't wait to talk about that. Her personal story is full of extraordinary success and devastating tragedy, which we'll talk about briefly here today. Um, It's these experiences that brings her power and her message to women to help them create, develop, and execute a rock solid thought process, right? Or thought thinking that everything was possible. Her ability to, um, gosh, bigger than life vision, sorry about that, propels them to succeed in all areas, including self-love, financial prosperity, health, lifestyle, a healthy lifestyle, caring relationships, a strong family, supreme confidence, I love that, and spiritual connection. Uh, Known for her contagious passion, uh, her speeches, her books, she's got a couple, her workshops, build self-confidence and create a community of support for women from all walks of life. So all about women. I know you have had some uh, male uh, clients as well, but mostly about women and how um, they can manifest these beautiful things for their lives. So I'd, I want to get started with um, this life-changing vision letter mm-hmm. for their life. So tell us how, because when you first, when I first met you, you know, and, and I thought, okay, you help people with women with their vision and, you know, that's hard enough to do as it is <laughs> to help people really decide what their vision is and determine their core values or what they really want in life. But what's a vision letter? So this all started when I was in my late twenties, Jen, I was, uh, you know, out of college into the late eighties. So, um, you know, in those days, what you did is you got the degree, you got the job, you worked your way up the ranks, right? Uh, my husband did that very successfully. He stayed with the same company for like 25 years. I, on the other hand, had an entrepreneurial spirit and changed jobs about every two years and couldn't figure out why I couldn't love the job. Yeah. You know, all of our other friends were going, why, what is the deal? Why can't you just stick with the job like we're doing? And I really thought there was something wrong with me until my first mentor showed up in my life. And she encouraged me to take a day off of work and get in a very quiet space and write out in great detail what I wanted my life to look like. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so I wrote a lot about my relationships with my husband, what kind of mom I wanted to be, what kind of values I wanted to instill in them. I wrote a lot about what kind of person I wanted to become what kind of an impact I wanted to make, what kind of leader I wanted to be. And I wrote a lot of ideas around, if I were to be an entrepreneur, what would I want to do? Because this is the first time I'd ever really thought about it. Mm -hmm. So without knowing it that day, Jen, I literally wrote out my first vision statement for my life. And I wrote it out kind of futuristic. So fast forward now, now 28 years later or so, I now get in front of people in workshops, as you mentioned, in, in, um, when I speak and I get people to do what I did. And I start with having them put a date at the top of the piece of paper as if it's three years from that day, because what most people do is they will have a vision. They'll have something rolling around in their brain that I call their hope and their wish and the prayer plan, hoping it happens, wishing happens, but they don't have any dates on things. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I get them to put a date at the top of the piece of paper. The next thing I get them to do is think about how old they will be on that day. And then I also get them to think about the ages of their family members and people who are involved in their life because time and aging are non-negotiable. Last thing I get them to do is to sit down and write the letter as if it is three years out 
and they're writing it to somebody as if they haven't talked to that person in three years and they're getting them up to speed on their life in as much detail as they can give it because it's really powerful, you know, how the hand and the brain works. Right. Writing it out, getting it on paper, super clear. That's where the magic is. That's the step that most people don't take. They might make a really pretty vision board with pictures and stuff on it, but that it just sticks on the wall and they don't put any dates or any action behind it. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I like that. And, and really what you're referencing is the Parkinson's law, right? That, you know, given as much time as possible, uh, that's how long it's going to take. I'm paraphrasing, of course, but, you know, if there's no timeline given on something then it will take forever to get to it. Um, and that is typically what, you know, we see, I mean, both of us are in, you know, this kind of space and we're, and we're talking to people, uh, you know, all the time. And this is exactly what the issue is, is one day I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, it yep. should be called the not gonna workshop or something, you know, where I'm ton, I'm tired. <laughs> oh my of gosh, I'm totally going to use that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna, 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 um, you know, and, but, uh, you know, and it's funny because uh, my first book, we wanted to call it stop talking, take action, get results. And that's really what it is. You know, yeah. you're saying stop, stop talking about it, you know, put it, put it into action, put it in paper and get results. So, all right, well, that's wonderful. So I want to, I want to ask you a couple of questions. I'm always writing questions down. So yeah. if you're seeing me look down, it's because I'm writing questions because I'm so curious, but um, so tell me how you help people walk through this, because I I've done an exercise very similar to that, you know, like believe it's a year from now, believe it's X amount of years and you're talking to yourself and I've done letters to, to God, you know, and letters from God to me, I've done all kinds of those things, but there's always something nagging in the back of your mind while you're writing it. You're going, yeah, I'm writing it out, but it's probably not going to happen. Yeah. Right. Right. How do we get past those limiting beliefs as we're looking at what we want to manifest for ourselves when we're yeah. creating this vision? So true, Jen. So, you know, when I am in front of a live audience, which I love the most, and I get people to write the letter, the very next thing I ask them is, okay, tell me how you feel about writing the letter. <laughs> And a lot of times people go, this is so great. I feel like a ray of hope. I'm feeling inspired. Um, I'm starting to see how I can maybe make that happen if I just reverse the, in in reverse the en engineer the plan, right? right? But then I get the brave little souls who go, I'm scared. Yeah. I'm overwhelmed. Uh, I don't see how this is possible being where my life is at my, right now. And so we have to talk through that because we all have those walls. Mm -hmm. you're going to hit a wall. I've hit a lots of walls and I'm sure you have too, that I get started on my vision and here comes a wall, right? My first business was in network marketing. So out of the gate, there was a lot of rejection. A lot of people going, you're crazy. Don't talk to me about it. You know, the whole thing. Um, and those kind of things can really shut you down. The key is that the vision has to be bigger than the wall. Yeah. It's the yeah. only way through it. The only way I've gotten through everything I've gotten through and the stuff that you've gotten through too, Jen, is because what you and I wanted and what we could see was more important and it was bigger than the wall. Yeah. Well, and it's really that we're, it's not about us now. It's about serving other people and how can we make impact in the, in the world? Because that's usually what it is. That's typically what someone's vision is, is how they can make you know, a difference, leave their mark in the world. So let's talk a little bit about, thank you for sharing that. Let's talk a little bit about your wall, mm. the wall that you've experienced, because this podcast is success to significance, everything in between, right? right. Life after breaking through glass ceilings. So you've had a couple of glass ceilings or walls that you've had to break through. So share with us some of the ceiling, uh, the, you know, the ceilings that you've had to break through in your life. Yeah. Well, like I said, I've stepped into network marketing 28 years ago when mm -hmm. network marketing was taboo. You know, it was crazy. Yeah. People were like, why can't you just stick with the corporate ladder thing? So there was a lot of that from my very own family members as well. It was really challenging. Yeah. Well, why uh, don't you share a little bit about, about where you were? I mean, what your network marketing is so that people understand what you're talking about. Um, some people sure. still don't know network marketing. They don't know the word, but you know, you okay. were very, very successful in it. So I don't want to scooch by that and make it seem like it wasn't a big glass ceiling because it was. Yeah. Uh, network marketing, also known as multi-level marketing, direct sales. I was in a company called Arbonne. Most women are familiar with it. Mm -hmm. um, I joined that because it fit, it checked all the boxes off of my vision that I wrote. I wanted to work from home, wanted to raise my kids. I wanted a residual income. Um, I wanted to earn all the trips, the car. I wanted all, and the leadership. 
-hmm. wanted to become that leader, right? So that was my vehicle for many, many years and went all the way to the top rank in the company um, and had a great team of people and, and had a lot of fun, uh, achieved a lot of awards and success with that. First thing that happened when I joined Arbonne is my best friend from high school was the woman who brought me into the company. She was the one who introduced me to it. And a year after me joining Arbonne, she died very suddenly, just mm. uh, had a brain aneurysm and went straight mm. into a coma and 13 days later died. Um, so I had to make a choice. Do I keep going? Which I did because I knew it was the vehicle and I knew it's what she would have wanted me to do. Right. So right. as I was raising my kiddos, that was, that was what I did. Loved it. Then when I became an empty nester, um, which was now almost 10 years ago, I decided that I wanted to take the one thing that I've been teaching all my leaders in Arbonne, which was the vision thing, how to write the vision so that it got them through all the rejection and all the walls. So I created my own curriculum and my own workbook called Vision is Victory that's been out since 2015. And I started doing little workshops, Jen, and that became bigger workshops. And then I brought people into year-long coaching programs. Um, been very, very successful with that, um, I'm happy to say. But unfortunately, in 2014, lost my husband to suicide. And then three years later, lost my son also to suicide. So big, big walls. So yeah. I tell people, It'll get you through anything if you know why you want it. And again, like you said, Jen, so beautifully, it's not about you. It's never been about me. Um, people will quit on themselves all day long, but if they've got it attached to something that's beyond them. <laughs> oh, yeah, that accountability, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> right. I think that's part that of it. Bad. Yeah. So that's what's gotten me to where I am now is that I just kept pushing through and now my daughter uh, and I, we co-authored a book that we launched in 2018, I'm sorry, 19 called Keep Looking Up. Yeah. And we speak together now. Yeah, I think that's, that's so great. And I know you guys are working at, you know, really creating something that works for both of you that you can combine your vision because I'm sure she has her own vision. She's younger. She's your daughter. She's a different generation, right? And you have a different, uh, you know, life goals. So going back to when your husband, uh, when you lost your husband and subsequently lost your son and, and maybe both, both periods of time. Did your vision ever change? Did it waver? Did you have to go back and say, ah, oh, this isn't working. This isn't what I really wanted. Because I imagine that people, you know, what we want to talk to people about is this letter of vision, right? This, um, this letter for your life, that it does change. And I think, you know, even though I've not experienced that kind of a tragedy, my vision does change. It's ever evolving. Um, so tell me, tell us a little bit about, that piece of it, you know, did it change and how frequently should we be changing and should we be concerned if we're flipping too much? Yeah. <laughs> I just, I, you know, sometimes it's just, it's a, you know, like for me, it's been, um, as I've matured, as my children left the house, my vision changed because now there were more opportunities that I didn't see when I was worried about the details. Right. So can you share with us a little bit about that uh, process? Yeah. Well, there's two pieces of this. One, it is going to change if you're evolving, if you're mm -hmm. choosing to personally grow and evolve and get bigger. Those are the, the tactical pieces of the vision, like the lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Did I see this lifestyle at this point in my life? Absolutely not. I saw something completely different that involved my husband and uh, my son being involved in the, in a business with me, you know, lots of things. Mm -hmm. I, I, I had no idea I was going to be living in Oklahoma again either. So there's that, <laughs> but who I am hasn't changed. When I wrote that first vision out, Jen, and I was noodling ideas about what I thought I might want to do. Remember I had, a, I told you I had a lot of question marks on stuff. Yeah. And I wrote things that led me to Arbonne because I was looking for a company where you could make residual income, become a leader, all the things. But on the last line of one of those pieces of paper, I wrote out of the blue for the first time that someday I would like to teach people about vision and purpose and knowing why it's so important in your life. Mm -hmm. And after the tragedies that I've been through, I, it was a wake up call as to me, as to me now understanding why God put me on that path so long ago. Yeah. Because yeah. now more than ever, I am passionate about people knowing their vision, knowing their purpose and following it. Because we are living in a world right now that so many people are drifting. Yeah. And that's a very scary, scary thing. 
Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, as you're talking about that, I definitely can see that in mine as well. Even though I asked the question thinking that I'm flipping with all this, you're right. It's the tactical piece that's still serving that long-term vision, you know, and, you know, the vision that I'm manifesting right now in my new TV show, right? Tell me I can't uh, because I, I, I want to show people that they can, because that's my vision. Um, And it's based on my experiences in life, just like yours is as well. So I see that the long term never changes, sort of like the North Star, you may go left or right or down or up or whatever, but the North Star still stands there, you know, it's a North Star um, type of vision that I, you know, that I definitely see in that. Um, How does this help people by having vision? I mean, everyone says, oh, okay, you should have vision. You should know what your purpose is or purpose-driven life, life pur- purpose-driven. You know, you've heard all these kind of phrases before, but how does this truly, truly help people both personally and professionally? Well, again, it, keep, it helps them keep consistent. You know, there were so many days, so, so many days, especially early on in Arbonne that I wanted to quit so bad. Mm-hmm. Um, what kept me going mm-hmm. was my vision. So it helps you stay consistent, which, you know, is one of the keys to life in every area of life. Um, You don't need to blow it out one month and then not do it anything next month. If you can do a little bit every single day, you're golden, right? So it helps you stay consistent. It helps you um, personally grow, stay inspired so that you don't quit. It helps you become an inspiration for other people, which I think is even bigger. Oh, yeah, because people love following people with vision. Yeah. Yep. And we need that in this world now Mm -hmm. more than ever as well, right? Um, So I think about that. I think about that, Jen, on the days where I think, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? This is crazy. It's too hard. It's, you know, the speaking and coaching world, as you and I both know, has become super noisy. Mm -hmm. Uh, So there's lots of moving parts to it and we have to stay on top of it. And so there's days you question it, you know, the imposter syndrome, you know, all the doubt, the fears, everything. Mm -hmm. So I just, it, it just helps me that no matter what I'm going through today, I'm still going to get in this chair and do what I'm called to do. Yeah. And I think, you know, that's important too, because really what you're talking about is the difference between inspiration and motivation. You know, motivation is a cyclical, it's very cyclical. You need booster shots all the time, (laughs) right? Whereas inspiration is, is a direction that you had. It's an ongoing process. It's a marathon. It's, you know, it's all those um, beautiful pieces that are, that are in there and yeah, you're going to have setbacks. Or if you're going on a long trip, you're going to need to take an exit right? To get yes. more gas, to take, to eat, to sleep, but you still are heading on that same path. And I think that's what you're telling us. Um, all right. So someone takes the time and they do their visual and their vision, right? And they write this letter to themselves three years out and they talk about how old they are and how old their family is and what it looks like and what it feels like, right? in that moment that they're there and they say, okay, it's done. Let it be written. Let it be done. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's yeah. some work behind this. There is work. What what would be the first step? Is it mechanical or is it mindset? Is it both? What would be the first step? I've got it written. Now what do I do? Mm, so many things. I the first thing I would tell you to do, and this is a big exercise that I've taught now to thousands of people. That every time I do it, people come back to me and tell me that thing changed my life. And what it is is making sure that you surround yourself with people who are going to be your nines and tens, the people who they're going to lift you up every time you want to go down. They're going to connect you to the right people. They're going to remind you how great you are. They believe in your vision. Um, you know, they're just your biggest cheerleaders. Your tribe. Yes. Your tribe. And they're your mentors. Usually people yeah. who are a little bit further ahead than you are in yeah. your personal life and in your profession. Right. Yeah. So number one, make sure that you check on your tribe and whoever is less than a nine or 10, they need to be kind of put back a little bit further in your life. Um, Powerful to do that. And the second thing is um, it's got to, we've got to now reverse engineer the plan. So take the three year and take one of those things and put some one year, very tactical uh, metrics based goals down. So, you know, an easy one to think about would be your health. If you've got a weight loss goal, all right get really super clear on, okay, how much weight do you want to lose and by when and put a date on it so that you've got some, some way to track how you're doing and you've got a number to work with. And then you take the one year and you reverse it to, okay, that's one year from now, where am I going to be at six months? 
-hmm. Where am I going to be in 90 days? 90 day goals are magical as you and I both know. Yeah. Yeah. And then they know, okay, this month I'm going to do these key things to get moving in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. Just breaking it down to bite-sized pieces, you know, because it can be, you know, it's, it, they always say this, right? How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. And this is a perfect example of that. You cannot consume it all at one time. You have to take the little steps to do that. Right. Who, who were your mentors or are your mentors? Give us some examples of who you looked up to from both a personal and a professional perspective. Uh, so my first mentor I told you about, she's still in my life, by the way, and I still uh, reach out to her every once in a while. Uh, my first biggest mentor was the woman who was president of Arbonne, Rita Davenport, who is also a very highly uh, recognized speaker uh, in this world. She's become like my second mama. <laughs> um, still very important. As a matter of fact, she was the last person I talked to before you. Um, oh, okay. My current mentor and business mentor is Sharon Lecter. Right. Who is also very big in the financial world and, and teaching people how to create assets in their life. Um, Dave Meltzer, also love Dave. He's yeah. very spiritual. So I look to him for more into it, growing my intuition, trusting my gut, um, right. you know, checking my attitude kind of thing. Oh, there's so many of them, Jen, yeah. right? So I want to ask you, uh, what is the difference? Because someone's sitting here thinking, okay, so you've got these people in your life. And as you're saying this, you know, I'm saying, okay, well, I have these people too. Some of them are paid people and some of them are not paid people. So, you know, what is the difference in, from your perspective in um, hiring a coach yeah. and hiring a mentor? Because sometimes you do have to hire mentors uh, as well as coaches. And I know Sharon talks about this because she's talked about the difference between coaching and mentoring, but but how do you find these people if you don't want to have, if you don't want to pay them? So for those that are listening or saying, okay, well, that's fine for her. She can have, you know, hire all these people, but I don't know that I can hire these people. So who are the, how, who do we reach out to? Who do we look up to? And how do we approach these people to ask them to give of their time? You know, the whole picking your brain conversation <laughs> that so many people have. Right. Um, so I've done both. I have a lot of mentors that I did not pay yeah. um, that gladly mentored me because they saw the potential. And then I've, I've hired coaches and I, I believe in both Yeah, because you can't go up without investing in yourself. It's just the wisdom always comes before the wealth. So you have to invest in yourself. So I reach out to people that I see on social media or I meet networking or they've, they've been connected to me from a mutual friend that um, again, are maybe they are, um, they're playing in the space that I want to play in and they're willing to kind of give me some advice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, they aren't necessarily holding me accountable to my game plan. And that's what a coach does. Yeah. You hire a coach because they're going to be the ones that say, okay, Carrie, what's your game plan for the next year, six months, 90 days. And you are responsible to checking in with them right on the game plan and adjusting if needed, um, hearing the tough stuff when you need to hear it. Yeah. So, um, that's what I have people like Sharon in my life for. She, she kind of course corrects my plan when I need it. Yeah. Yeah. And I imagine I, and I, I mean, I know her enough to know <laughs> enough to know. All right. So what, what's next for you? What's, mm -hmm. what's happening now for you? Um, my daughter three year I, letter. Yeah. <laughs> so my daughter, uh, got married three years ago and had a baby 18 months ago. And, um, so I have moved my life to be closer to her little family because it's my number one thing has always been to be able to be with my family wherever, when, wherever, whenever they need me, Yeah, which is why I made this move from Scottsdale to Oklahoma the past month so that I could be helping her with my grandson. It's very important to me that I'm a big part of his life, not just the holiday grandma. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's a big part of my vision, Jen, because I'm sure baby number two will be coming sometime in the next three years. Um, and I just want to really be a part of that. So professionally, my daughter and I are working together, as I mentioned, as speakers. So we've been working the better part of this year with a speaking um, mentor, coach, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm who has been working, working on our brand for us together and uh, teaching us how to uh, really reach out to get on those bigger stages that we want to be on, get more press and media around what we're doing, um, because we have a big story to tell and we really want to reach more people faster. 
Yeah. And tell us a little bit about the story that you're talking about on stage, because I know it's partly vision, but there's some other pieces to it as well. For those who are listening and thinking, hey, maybe I'd like to come and see you speak, or I'd like to hire you to speak. Right. Well, we share, uh, you know, I kind of share my backstory of why I've been teaching vision for so long. Laurel shares a little bit about why she now is teaching this as well as a young adult, because she's reaching a whole different uh, demographic than I am, Jen. So it's a beautiful yeah. partnership. Yeah. Um, we talk about our stories first, and then we talk about how knowing our purpose and our vision has gotten us through our, our tragedies mm-hmm. and how we're applying it to our life now so that we can, again, continue to be an inspiration for those people that are going through some pretty tough stuff. And they're wondering, how do I get through this? Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And then of course we do the tactical parts of how to write the vision you know, getting it out on paper with the dates so that they walk out with something tangible they can work on. Yeah, I think that, I think that's great. What do you think has um, been the toughest, I don't want to say tragedy, but the toughest obstacles that people have been experiencing during this pandemic? Because I think that uh, people probably had these underlying uh, struggles yeah. Uh, and challenges, but they were so busy doing what we were all doing before the pandemic that it was it was being pushed underneath the rug. So yeah. what's emerged? What's been the most consistent thing that's emerged from the pandemic that you've seen um, in helping people overcome any of their challenges and see that vision for themselves? Yeah, I think it leveled the playing field for all of us, Jen. You know, I think there are a lot of people that they had never been through anything tragic in their life until this happened. Mm -hmm. And so I think we saw that is that we all had a common denominator that we were all working through a really tough time. And so I think it, it shook some people up uh, that again, had not rocked this, nothing like what I've been through had rocked their world Mm -hmm. yet. So I think the second thing is that people started looking around at what they had spent their time doing up to that point. Yeah. And let a lot of stuff go that just didn't matter anymore. Yeah. Either they were forced into it because they had to, or they just, you know, had more time to think about it, time, more time to kind of get rid of those things. I know I've done some of this and I know you have too this year of just letting go of the things that just really, do I really want to be doing that anymore? Yeah. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, No question. Really. I think the last thing is valuing who they want in their life, Mm -hmm. um, who they really, really want in their life and who they want to become and making really better a lot better choices about boundaries Mm -hmm. and um, how they want to show up. Yeah, that's, that's great. And, you know, I'm so glad that you're out there, you know, with this mission, you know, I think what people don't really understand is that people that are speakers and coaches and mentors, you know, that are trying to get a message out to make an impact on the world. Um, you know, so often we're criticized or we are looked at, as, you know, that that third of a second, whatever the number is, right? It keeps changing, but that third of a second of making a first impression and how we're judged. And it takes so much to stick your neck out and tell stories and share. And, you know, I remember speaking at an event a couple of years ago. Um, I was the the closing speak, keynote speaker and um, Monica Lewinsky was the, the opening keynote speaker. And she, you know, said something that I thought was so profound that, I mean, I still remember it today. And the first thing she said was she raised her hand and said, or asked everybody, raise your hand if you've done something that you don't want anybody to know about, right? And everybody raised their hands, (laughs) like, oh, we all have little cobwebs, right? Of things that we don't want people to know about. And, um, you know, for me, I thought, gosh, you know, that's true. You know, here she was, she was the first cyber bully ever that ever existed. It was just at that time where we, the whole world could see it. And I think that um, that's what we're all contending with now is these, these things that we didn't really want to have to have come up to the top and the surface, but they have to, in order for us to be able to grow. And what you're doing, you know, is just very powerful, um, you know, in doing that and sticking your neck out and saying, Hey, I'm going to share some of my stories, right? things that I don't prefer to show. So I, I just really, you know, want to recognize that and what you're doing. I think that's very powerful, um, you know, and I hope that you keep it up and I hope your vision, you know, helps you continue to move through that as quickly as possible. I want to ask a question, and this is going to be so off topic. You're going to be so surprised when I ask this question, but uh, I do like asking some really funny questions. To people. Oh, come on. Okay. 
Yeah, I know. She's like, hold on, hold on. Okay, I'm okay. okay. When it when it comes time to uh, you know not trusting your vision and you're getting a little down, what's your go to junk food? I would say cheeseburger and fries. Oh wow, wow! Well, you know what? You're like the fourth person who said French fries. There, there must be a French fry fetish going on yeah. around the world. Yeah, I don't eat them. You know, I'm not much of a foodie, so I don't really turn to food. Yeah, uh, but yeah, if I'm yeah, that's comfort food. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. And that's always good to know, you know, so I might send you some French fries and a hamburger. Okay. That's how you're feeling. Down. <laughs> that's awesome. That would be funny. Yeah, I know that would be, it's like, oh, I'm saying instead of a card, right. Instead of a card, I say, my oh, French here's fries at my door. Yeah. <laughs> some <laughs> Uber eats or something. Um, so the last question I want to ask you is whether it's a book or it's a quote or it's a mantra, what would you like to leave us with today? so that we would be inspired to take action on this vision. One of my favorite quotes, and it's been a lifelong thing for me, is where there is will, there is always a way. And that's what I want people to know, is that I think more times than not, they shut down from even trying something because Mm -hmm. they're already telling themselves it's not possible. And I know that when you want and desire something, and it it is your calling, because I believe we all have a calling. We've sent, we've all been sent here to accomplish one thing that we can uniquely carry out. Um, there's always a way. It's always what Marie Forleo says. It's figure outable, right? <laughs> right, right. I love that word. It's yeah. figure outable. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. And I think that's a really good quote too, because, you know, so often these quotes, you know, that we've had around for years and years and years are just passed over, but there, there's a real true meaning behind it. And, and actually the way that you said it uh, resonated with me because we always say, oh, if there's a will, there's a way. But what you're talking about is knowing the will. Yes. Knowing that will, because otherwise it's just too superficial. Yes. And it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. So what is your will, <laughs> right? <laughs> it's really a question of what is your will? Because we, when you have that will, there's a way. Yes. It totally is. So it's finding your will, not finding your why. <laughs> it's finding your will. So and good. What you want to have in the future. I love that. Yeah. So uh, what is the best way for us to get in touch with you? The best way. We'll obviously have lots of links in here for people to get in touch with you. But if they just need to get in touch with you right now, I love what you said. I can't wait. I've got to talk to Sharon. Um, to, sorry, to Sharon, to Carrie. What is the best way for them to reach you? Well, there's lots of ways, but I'll just give you my website, which is just carrieconley.com. There's okay. a place in there that you can request to have a call with me. And I'm obviously, I'm all over social media. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah. that sounds, that sounds wonderful. Well, Carrie, it's been just an honor to have you here. You know, we, we probably should tell everybody too, we're in a mastermind together and um, you know, and that's been uh, just a wonderful experience and we still have more time and more that we'll be learning about one another and helping one, one another grow and be mentors to one another or coaches or shoulders to cry on to one another. So I really appreciate you taking time to be part of this podcast and shedding light on your story so that it makes an impact for others. So grateful, Jen. Thank you so, so much. Absolutely. So everybody, again, thank you so much for listening in or watching. If you're watching us on YouTube or uh, podnation.tv, we are um, so delighted that you spent time with us today. And we're hoping that you are leaving with something new to think about, something that you could sleep on tonight and tomorrow morning when you get up, you are taking some action on it to make an impact in your world as you move from success to significance and crack through the glass ceilings that you have in your life. And we will see you on the next episode. You've been listening to Success to Significance with Jen Duplessis, the number one podcast for people wanting to give more value and make an impact. Loved this episode? Be sure to subscribe right now at www.jenduplessis.com slash S2S for more stories, strategies, and thoughts to help you gain significance and success. And if you like what we're doing, don't forget to give us a rating and review so we can continue to bring you the best content possible. Join us next week for another breakthrough episode. Thank you for listening.